Today, three great recipes. And just when you think you have nothing in the house, go to the pantry. And before you know it, dinner is ready. First, it's pasta and bean soup. What takes a long time in pasta fagioli is if you're doing the dry beans, soaking them uh, overnight, and then of course cooking them for about 45 minutes to an hour. This recipe will just take the beans right out of the can and make the pasta e fagioli. And here I have three cans of the beans. What we'll do, you know what? I want some texture and I want some creaminess. So I will puree part of them and part of them will leave whole. So these are the canned beans in a food processor, in a blender, whatever you have with a little bit of water. So that's nice and creamy. So let's begin with the roux. So what is a roux? It's some good olive oil, but you can start with butter or whatever you'd like. Some garlic for flavoring, and I'm just gonna crack the garlic cloves so that the flavor of the garlic comes out. Okay. Here, I have some water boiling. Once I get the base going, I will add the boiling water with some tomatoes and all of this will form the base for our beans. The garlic is beginning to cook, releasing its flavors, just a little bit of flour. And this is, this is always a good base. If you have, you wanna make a soup and you want a little body or denseness to the soup, beginning with a roux at the, at the base always sort of gives you that texture and that complexity. And I like the root to get a little bit of caramelization because you know that gets kind of that nutty toasted flavor. And that sort of becomes part of the soup itself. The aromas are beginning to happen, the caramelization, the garlic, so that will permeate your whole base of the soup. Get a ladle here. First you take just the A ladle of two of the water and you sort of break up the roux into a creaminess. You can see how nice and creamy it gets. That's the base of the soup. But when we add a lot of liquid, it sort of dissipates and will become thin, but still will be quite good. So let's put the water in. it's about three quarts of hot water, boiling water. And whenever you're cooking and you're adding liquids or, or sauces or stocks to what you're cooking, bring it at the same temperature because, you know, cooking is a chemical reaction and temperature is very instrumental. So if you bring it all down to cold temperature with something cold, it changes the dynamics of what you're cooking salt keep in mind that it will reduce so but i want to flavor it a little bit anyway i love rosemary with beans a sprig or two of fresh rosemary just break it like that we'll throw the whole thing in some tomato plum tomato and you know if you have a food mill that's fine but otherwise i just kind of crush it like that whenever i cook with tomatoes it is all about tomato paste or plum tomato in their juice like that. I don't like pureed tomatoes. I don't like chopped tomatoes. I don't like those because I don't know what I'm getting. Here I can see what I'm getting. And you can even taste, you know, it's, it's a good habit to get into when you open a can of tomato because a lot of you ask me, says, okay, what's the best tomatoes? What's the best tomatoes? Well, you know, taste it, taste it. So what should you taste? A nice acidity, a clean tomato taste a sweetness underneath, and no bitterness, none of that kind of metallic taste. Nice, fresh tomato taste. We'll put that right in there. Now, as far as spiciness, you can go two ways. You can go with the, the fresh ground pepper at the end, or a little pepperoncino right now, which I don't mind. Let's add the pureed beans. You bring this to a boil, and then you lower it, you let it simmer, and you let it cook for about 
20 minutes to half an hour until all the flavors homogenize. All right. The soup has reduced substantially. That's great. Let me just taste a little bit for saltiness. You know, I tell you all the time, keep on tasting. Mm -hmm. Really good. Okay, at this point, let's put the ditalini. Ditalini, you know, ditale means thimble in, in Italian, and so these are little thimbles. And, you know, the pasta grows substantially, so let's see how much I need, because we also need to get some beans in here as well. Okay, that looks good. Now, you always put the pasta just before you're ready to serve. You know, it's going to take about 12 minutes, and then we're going to be ready. And if you do not serve it then, the pasta continues to get bigger and softer and bushier. Another alternative to that is that you cook your pasta separately in a little salted water, you drain it, and then you add it just before serving. But I like it cooked in the soup itself. And of course, we have the beans, the canned beans that were left over. And we, of course, you know, they're cooked in the can, so we don't want to overcook them as well. We add them in the last minute, so let this cook. Let's simmer away. You know, there's nothing better than a good piece of grilled bread with a good soup. Fit unta, a greasy slice of toasted bread. Let's get some good bread. Uh, here I have some whole wheat, and I think that's, that's great. You can do whole wheat, regular bread, whatever you'd like or whatever you have. So when you grill bread, you know, the tendency is always, oh, first cutting it, then oiling it, and then grilling it. That's wrong because if you put the oil on the bread and then you put it in the pan like this hot, you're actually burning the oil. You're changing the flavor of the oil. So first grill your bread, that's number one. While it is grilling, you can put the weight on it, but you gotta be careful because it burns quickly here. Olive oil, just a little bit of salt in the oil. Some good garlic cloves cleaned because we're gonna rub the bread with it and just crack them a little bit. Okay. We are ready to go. Let me see the soup. That's bubbling away. We had the rosemary branch, if you will, floating around. I'm trying to Got it. Okay, this bread looks really good and done. So let me just... And while it is still warm, what you do is you take the garlic, just like that, the crush, and you rub the bread. So you get the flavor of it no big pieces, but this the intense flavor of garlic. And then you brush it with the olive oil. So it's the nice and freshness of the olive oil. You know, you get all of the fruit, all of the aromas without altering it by grilling it or giving it that burnt kind of uh, effect. And you continue to do so. This is the proper way of doing fetunta. If you were in Tuscany, this is what they would do. And it's easy for you and it is just delicious and will go great with the soup. So let's check on the soup. It is, should be done. Actually, I'm ready to taste it for you. Okay, just enough, you see the ratio of liquid to the beans and to the pasta. Uh, I kind of like it like this. I like my soup a little soupy. But you know what? If you don't, then you can add a little more pasta. You can cook it, cook the basic soup a little longer. Uh, and so, so let me get a nice ladle full and taste for you. Mm. That looks really good and you can see out of your cupboard so what would I add to this I would add a little bit of course of grated cheese 
just like that. A drizzle of the olive oil. So you see all the plays that I have here on the olive oil. I use the base to cook, but I'm drizzling some raw here. I put some raw on the toasted bread, really appreciating the essence and the flavors. And this is how you capture it. It's really delicious. You know, it's heartwarming. I love soups. And if you can combine pasta and soups, I love it even better because I get two of my favorite things. And this is so simple, so straightforward, from the cupboard, and very economical.